Dipole-dipole forces. Now we'll talk about a specific type of intermolecular force called dipole-dipole forces. We are going to learn what dipole-dipole forces are and to identify which molecules have them. As the name implies, these only occur in molecules which have a dipole. They are caused by the partial negative on one side of the molecule interacting with the partial positive on the other side of the molecule. These cause an overall attraction of the molecules to each other. While here we only have a static picture for the sake of illustration, these are actually constantly being formed and rebroken. They are constantly interacting with other molecules around them, so we call them transient. In reality, you should think of each of these molecules as spinning and interacting with all of the ones around it. Now, dipoles are not simply a yes or no identity. There are some molecules which have a very strong dipole, and others which have a very small dipole. The stronger the dipole, the more intermolecular forces the species will have. We'll talk specifically about the effects of intermolecular forces on boiling point in a minute, but as mentioned before, the more IMFs, the higher the boiling point, and that is illustrated well here. We start with propane, something that is generally considered nonpolar, although it does have an exceptionally tiny dipole. We then compare that to something like acetonitrile, which has a very strong dipole thanks to very electronegative nitrogens. This strong dipole moment means that it has much stronger intermolecular forces, and as we'll see in a minute, this makes its melting and boiling temperature higher than those species that do not have that high of a dipole. I have also included the molecular mass on each of these so that you can see that they are about the same size, that what is affecting each of these boiling points or what is affecting the intermolecular forces is the strength of the dipole rather than the amount of the electrons. We are also going to talk about ion dipole forces in this section. While not strictly a dipole dipole force, it is the closest to dipole dipole and I think fits in well here. Ion dipoles are just like dipole dipoles, except that they occur in mixtures where an ionic compound and a polar molecule are both present. For instance, if salt is dissolved in water, the negative chlorine ions will attract the positive side of water and the positive sodium ions will attract the negative side of water. Much like when you just have a dipole-dipole force, your positives and your negatives are attracted to each other. Now let's do two examples. Remember what I said about the prereqs from the earlier classes to be able to complete this work. You must be able to look at a formula, draw a Lewis structure, and determine if it has a dipole. This means that you have to know about the geometries of the molecules as well. If you don't know these, you must go back and learn how to do it. I'm happy to help you in office hours with these as well, but please do not blow off refreshing your memory on these topics. PCl3 is a tetrahedral molecule, or a tetrahedral electron geometry molecule. This makes it trigonal pyramidal as a molecular geometry. Remember to go back in the videos if you don't know how to do that. Because all three of these bonds are polar, and they do not cancel themselves out, this means that this is going to be a polar molecule. Polar molecules have dipoles, and therefore PCl3 does have a dipole. Because it has a dipole, it also has dipole-dipole forces. Now try this one on your own before moving on. Looking at C2H6, this one has all the bonds that are effectively nonpolar. Remember that we consider a carbon-hydrogen bond nonpolar. While there is a very slight electronegativity difference, it is so small that it does not matter. And even if it did, any slight polarity that might exist due to the CH bonds would definitely be canceled out rather than additive, and so it is most certainly a nonpolar molecule. Since it is nonpolar, it does not have dipole dipole intermolecular forces. In review, dipole dipole forces occur in molecules that have a dipole, or in other words, in polar molecules. To determine if something has a dipole-dipole force, you must first draw the Lewis structure, decide if it is polar, and if it is polar, then it has dipole-dipole forces. If it is not polar, then it does not. Ion dipole forces are very similar, but occur when there are two different species, and one is ionic and one has a dipole. 